Hello everyone, welcome back to Hate Plus. Alright, let's continue day two of the male mute route. This one is probably going to be a lot faster than the first one because there's probably going to be no new messages to read at all. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, hi. Let's not waste any time, I'm anxious to read about what happened. All right, let's just jump right into it. Okay, I believe I was working on M2, was I not? M2, 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 yep. All right, let's grab the rest of M2. M2, M2, and more M2, and that is it, okay. Yeah, this is probably gonna be super quick. Like, I'm guessing no more than a half hour is my guess, because there's nothing new to read other than her dialogue and her reactions to stuff. But I think it's at the end of day two that you read the death of old mute, isn't it? I think it is, so this is going to be, um, interesting. Alright, let's read this review. I believe that was a review condemning the play from Hyo A. Chong as being bad, right? Wasn't it like trashy or something? It sounds pretty normal though. Hm. Yeah, trashy. More discerning audience used to stay away from the pale shadow of what the silver eternity used to be. Two stars, yep. Oh god, and <laughs> Mute's gonna love these. I hate the mornings after. Mei Chana. Um, wow. There's so much wrong with that. Mute, there's nothing wrong with that. What even is this? In the absence of men, do all women just naturally play married? <sighs> Mute. <laughs> it just keeps going. She's so pissed off. Oh my god. She's just getting angrier and angrier as we read this. Look at her. Ah. <laughs> uh. I think she's going to explode. I wasn't really prepared for this kind of detail. Ah, <sighs> oh mute. You know, sometimes I don't know whether to be pissed off with her, or just kind of find it cute that she's so embarrassed. I don't know. Jeez, could you be any more melodramatic? See, this is why it doesn't make sense for women to be together. Wait, but I thought it was A. Chong who played the man's role. Wait, what are, you, what are you even talking about? I don't know. I'm not gonna get bogged down in it. I don't get it. Wow. Uh, hey, can we talk? Sure. What's up? I'm having a really hard time dealing with some of the stuff we've read. Like, what the hell is up with the society's treatment of marriage? Oh, you mean why is it so... much better? Queen Yana always told me it was bad in the past, but like... I don't know, I guess like, it's one thing to understand abstractly how those relationships worked, but another to read about individuals, you know? I mean, I know you're not really properly married yet, but you're a man. Would you be okay with marrying someone who worked, like, even if she made more money than you? See, she's totally gonna hate me after this, after I'm done with this. She's gonna hate me so much. Sure, why not? Uh, because it's a complete inversion of the natural order? <sighs> oh, mute. I don't mean to judge you, I just, like, I don't get it. Why would anyone be so cruel to women as forcing them into a role they can't fulfill? And I mean, like, I don't know, it doesn't seem like anyone really cares that much about marriage in this period. Like, reading about Hyo E. Chong and Mei Chana, it sounds like they hardly e even ever so much as thought about marriage. Gee, maybe it's because marriage isn't that big of a deal, hmm? <laughs> Amazing thought, isn't it, Mute? I just don't get it. Like, if it weren't for the names, reading stuff like that, I'd think there were men. But even more importantly, they just don't seem to respect marriage very much, period. 
Is, like, that normal in your time, too? Very normal. It's scary. It's just... It's the most important relationship. Like... I don't know, it just feels unfair. Filial relationships are the most important things, and for a woman, marriage is the most important one of those. Like, I'm not being judgmental, okay? This isn't a superiority thing. Uh, mute, you are being judgmental. It's just, you know, to expect women to get by without those relationships, all alone. Like, it just feels incredibly cruel. <laughs> cruel? I... How... <laughs> Why would that be cruel? What? What? I'm a security program, right? My job is to prioritize stability above all else. It's important. Like, stability isn't just about stopping banditry. It starts with people, okay? If individual families aren't even in harmony, then what hope does the rest of the ship have? Well... I mean, I guess we both know the answer to that question, in the end. Yep. Oh, new message. Probably one I've gotten before. Yep, lay over on Earth. So they give you all the different places, right? Lake City Ruins, Atlantis Science Museum. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, back to it. God, it's amazing. If you don't actually read the documents, finishing this game would probably, like, take... I mean, aside from having to wait... Uh, to the end of each day, you know, 12 hours to play it again. Although there are ways to skip that, by the way, but I'm not doing that. Um, assuming you don't count the time in between playing it, if you didn't actually read the documents, and just did the dialogue, it could, you could probably finish the game in like... a half hour to an hour, maybe. It's just strange to think of, because my original playthrough, when I read everything, it took me eight to nine hours. Which was actually longer than Analog A Hate Story, which amazed me. I make everything worse. <sighs> yes, of course you make everything worse. Oh, fuck you, mute. <laughs> God, just thinking about Hyo E. Chong and Chinna's relationship makes me want to cry. Uh... They were so. They were such a cute couple! <sighs> you know, I never looked at the background. Those are flowers in the background, aren't they? So that must be her flower stand. Yeah. Huh. Alright, come on, mute. Lay on your judgment. Canned tea? Was that not a thing in her time? Like, why didn't they figure this out for her years ago? It'd be so much easier for her if she was more reasonable about it. Reason about, reasonable about wanting to marry someone that she doesn't care for. Mute, I think the reasonable response to being half forced into marrying someone that you don't want to and aren't attracted to at all I think the reasonable response to that is to say, fuck you. I think that's the reasonable response, Mute. What monster taught these women to expect love to come before marriage instead of after? <laughs> that, uh... <laughs> With some of the things she says, I'm really not sure whether to just laugh or just be sad, or both. I guess I'm doing both. It's kind of funny because it's so ridiculous, but at the same time, it's extremely harmful and disgusting. Marrying someone and hoping that you like them after, after you've committed your life to them. That's horrible. That's just horrible. <sighs> yep, and this is the last thing you hear about their relationship. Oh no, poor girl. Wait, you mean you actually care about her? I'm amazed, Mute. She just keeps getting herself, uh, setting herself up for disappointment. It's a generous offer. Chana needs to be more rational. <sighs> but Ai Chong did the right thing. How can she be so unappreciative of that?
Bribery. Oh, that's the first Emperor's brother they're talking about. Wait, who is this? Oh, no photo. I knew that man. He was a counselor of agriculture back then, but I knew him as Minister Cho. Alright, what was that? Oh, yeah. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I have returned. Um, I'm pretty sure a fly went into my mouth. So I took off running and kind of coughed up a lung, and I don't even know where the hell it went, but I'm kind of disgusted just thinking about the fact that it might be inside of me. Ugh. Ugh. Just, ugh. But anyway, there's nothing much I can do, and I'm sure it's not going to kill me, so whatever. <clears throat> okay. Where the hell was I? I think I was just starting this, right? Um, oh yes, 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 yes. So this is... Uh, talk, yeah, about the extravagant bribery. Um, when the Ryo family wants to get you in their pocket, they sure don't fuck around. Right, that's where she meets, uh, he meets... Ai Chong. Yep. Yep, she's working at a, as a courtesan for him. That was her, uh, patron. Lost love, huh? Yeah, that hair clip. It's fortunate for her, but I still don't think courtesans are really proper. Whatever. Well, I guess it ended well for everyone, at least, even if there was heartbreak. <laughs> it... what? It ended well for everyone? Uh, no. Ai Chong is no longer with the woman she loves. And the flower girl is no longer with the woman she loves either. And Ai Chong is now working for someone she doesn't care about. As her, as his personal, not slave, but, you know, servant or whatever the hell, courtesan, I guess. No, that didn't end well for everyone, Mute. <clears throat> Wait, is that, is that it? Sorry, I keep clearing my throat because I'm just thinking about that stupid freaking fly. Uh, technically, it wasn't a fly. It was just something that was flying. It wasn't actually a fly, but it flew. All right, that's it. Okay, did I grab all of M2? Let's check. M6, M5, alright. We have, so what is next? I don't think there's an M3. At least not right now. So M4 is next. Yep, M4. Alright, oh god, that's all of the record stuff. Wow. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not going to have to read that again. M4, M4, more M4. And M4. Okay, let's go. Chief Counselor. Mother at Gritted Act. Nobility Stipend Amendment. Just trying to refresh my memory on these. Meritocracy Act. Oh, yes. The wonderful Meritocracy Act. <clears throat> All right. Uh, well, I don't think the order of any of this particularly matters. Let's just go from the top down. Education Act. Old Mute was so rude. <laughs> yes, she was. But she was also kind of awesome. Uh. Oh, of course. Yana would want to improve literacy. Uh. Didn't Yana want to rem... I'm pretty sure she wanted to hurt literacy, at least among the peasants, didn't she? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what she was doing. Well, that's a cold maneuver. Respectable, but... I can't deal with how rude she is, though. Chief Counselor? So this is the result of old mutes conspiring. 
Ah uh, yes, it's a deciding on the successor, uh, successor, successor for the position of chief counselor. Yep, yep, yep. I really wish I could drag this, but I can't. I have to scroll. Or click this. But that's even slower. And you can see all of their infighting there within the... Among the counselors. Sorry, I'm still thinking about that damn fly. 1600 years is such a long time. Yes, yes it is. So Old Mute named the new chief counselor that easily. Motherhood Credit Act. Oh wow, that was a problem even in the past. Well, actually, I guess it'd be worse without marriage being respected, huh? Sounds like a good policy. It's not. It wasn't. <laughs> Can I get her expression to change back? I just loved, I was looking at her face and she just, she looked really happy. No, I can't get it to change back. She looked really happy at what I was reading. And then she just went to super worried. Let me see if I can get it back. That was funny. Motherhood Credit Act. Talk to me. Okay, please. Uh, hold on just a second. Oh, I can't get it back. She just, she looked like she was just respect, she respected the policy so much and she looked so happy and then I kept scrolling down and then she changed to that. <laughs> yeah, okay, she's not happy anymore. Jeez, what's with her arguing with a man like that? I'd never... Hmm. But, like, I guess it went through in the end, right? Yep. Unfortunately. Okay, what'd you have to say? Right now, I just feel like... Like, I don't really have any purpose anymore. Like I said to you before you downloaded me. Really? I'm like the widow of the Magungwa. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. It died before me, and now here I am, without the ship I devoted my entire life to. With nothing left behind but the woman who failed it. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm grateful to you for bringing me along. I don't like, it, like the idea of widow suicide, like... I don't think it's right to pressure someone into making that kind of decision, right? If someone wants to relieve the burden they're putting on others, it's an admirable thing to do, but... I just think I just think it's important to try other solutions first, you know? I went along with you for a reason, and I'm not ungrateful for that. You seem to be a good person, and I respect that a lot. But, like, can you tell me why? Why did you bring me with you? Um, hmm. Well, the true reason is because I wanted to see what other the other pathways in the game led to, so let me think of what I'd like to go for. Well, it's definitely not love. I do not love her. Pity? I do feel bad for her after everything she had to go through. Duty? I'm gonna go with duty. I see. That's just like you, isn't it? Like, I always thought of my security responsibilities as being the same as any woman's responsibilities for their inner sphere, just like with mine encompassing the entire ship. <clears throat> but even still, being social, spying for my mistress, making reports on the state of the ship every day, like, those things aren't really the same as a normal wife's duties, are they? Nope. So really, being programmed as a woman, it should be a good thing that I'm relieved of those duties, right? I'll always mourn the Magungwa, of course. But it's better to just be a normal, ordinary wife, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, not necessarily, it just depends on what you want. Oh my god, she looks really happy. <laughs> I'd never really considered the implications, but, you know, I'm capable of feeling love. I'm just like a woman in that way, too. Oh my god, she looks extremely happy. I don't think I've ever seen her so happy before. Uh, are you, are you... Are you okay, Mute? But it could never be my priority, not while my primary duties were the ship's security. 
I've fallen in love before, though. Yes, you have. I can't even imagine how many times with how long you've been alive. But I knew you were in love with Xiu Yang. Not that she'd admit it, of course, but she was. She totally was. I mean, like, you're a decent man, and you have a rom romantic job that gets you your own starship, and you're compassionate. Oh, oh, do you mean me? There was a reason why I secretly wanted to take you with me. Wanted you to take me with you. Hmm. I... Somehow she still seems to like me. I, I really don't think that's going to last. But somehow she still likes me. I don't know why. I don't agree with her on much of anything. Like, I could fall in love with a man like that. So maybe it's okay for me to be the Magungo's widow, but also your wife. Uh, I don't... Mute, I don't know if I want you as my wife. Like, I... Yeah, I, I don't really... I don't really want you as my wife. God, I'd feel bad for rejecting her, though. <sighs> because now after now that she's been separated from the Magungwa, she has, like... I mean, she basically has nothing. That was her entire life's purpose for over a thousand years. For thousands of years. Is to protect the Magungwa. And now she no longer has that. So what is her life's purpose? I mean, she has she has nothing. All the people she knew, gone. Her entire life's purpose, gone. What the hell does she have now? Ah, oh, jeez. What am I even saying? I can't believe I'm thinking about that at this time. We're supposed to be focusing on historical research, not to me rambling like a girl about emotions. Let's get back to finding out what came from all that horrible degeneracy and premarital affairs and conspiring. Okay, let's get to it. Oh, another on red. Leads to not ignore. Is that the one about AI? Oh, that's the that's a freaking uh, Nigerian scam thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe there were a few documents left, right? View unread. All right, nobility stipend amendment. What's that nobility stipend amendment about? Do I care? Um. Do, 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 do. Oh yes, that's that's the one I never understood. The nobility stipend will only be distributed by patrilineal family lines as officially registered and not paid twice to married couples. I don't even know what that means. Do you mute? Can you shed any light on this? Okay, I don't understand what's noteworthy about this. Neither do I. I didn't before, and I didn't by the end of the game, and I guess she doesn't either. Wow, incredibly uncivilized. Yep. Right, this is the one where they're, uh... Let's formally begin Day 9 of Debate on the Meritocracy Act. Day 9 of the debate, so yeah. Tempers were a little bit... frayed. To say the least. This is a long one. A very, very, very long one. Hanging out nobles to dry? How barbaric. So, a meritocracy wasn't meant to change anything then. How corrupt. Well, it did, up changing, it did end up changing quite a bit, didn't it? And didn't it end up basically being used to change the face of the entire council? If I'm remembering right, I think it was. The new council! What unbelievable rudeness from Old Mute. <clears throat> I can't believe it. I was this much of a shrew in the past. <laughs> uh, I used to have that kind of power. Yeah, you used to have a lot of power. Just unbelievable. Did she think wearing pants let her dictate to men like that? Ah, oh, mute. See, that's... That's one of the big reasons I wouldn't want her as a wife. 
She's all about women being submissive to their husbands. That would not be what I'd want from a wife. That would be so... disturbing and boring. Having a, just a submissive wife that does whatever the hell you tell her to, and it, what? No, I want a real person. An individual, not... Not... I, whatever the hell you'd call that. You know, someone who actually has their own thoughts? And expresses them? And isn't afraid to tell you what they think? That's what I would want, not... Someone who's afraid to wear pants and... S speak to her husband... Uh, disagree with her husband in any way. That'd be horrible. Whoa. Gee, she sure deserved that one. Which one? I, I don't even remember what exactly is happening here. No dispute here, taking out of my budget is kind of problematic, though. What are they even talking about? I actually don't remember. The act passes. What act, what act were they passing? I don't remember what they were passing. Let's go back to the beginning. Oh, this is the first session since the meritocracy exams. Uh, oh, it's a tribute consolidation proposal from Councillor Smith. Small taxes... Uh, Small taxes and tributes and consolidate them into... Okay, so there's a bunch of tax, little tax things and whatnot. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, I think we have two more extractions that we can do. I think I can get six more and then I'll be done down to 7% power, I think? Alright. I was on M4, right? Yep, yeah. alright, let's grab the rest of M4. Think that's it? Yep. And let's start on M5. Okay. Yep, and that's going to leave us with 7% power, so we should be able to extract three more. Now, we have some of Kim So-Yi's journals here. And I've heard that Mute's responses to Kim So-Yi's journals are frustrating. So I think this is going to fray our relationship even more. But we'll do that when we get to them. For now, let's go through these records office things. Lineage Act Amendment. Huh? Why wouldn't a family be led by the eldest son? <sighs> How rude. Yeah, pretty much everyone in the council was a big dick. Massive like, just imagine massive phalluses sitting in chairs. That's what everyone in the council was like. Just massive phalluses slapping against each other. Yeah, that's a good mental image, isn't it? Bureaucrat class act. She's completely out of control. I assume she's talking about mute. Or old mute. I can't believe... She's got to be kind of embarrassed by her old self, even though it's not her. I'm sure she feels some responsibility or something for that, because that was her. <clears throat> I'd never be like that. I can be chatty, but there's a time and place for that. Yeah, she really hates her old self. Unity Act, alright. I spoke like that to Emperor Ta Taijo. Not you, the Counselor of Captaincy. Alright, so what was the Unity Act? Where is it? Where do they, where do they even get to it? They're just bickering. Alright, so where is it? I don't even know. Anyway, I can't believe I defend the principles of that awful society like this. 
Jeez, if she'd gotten her way, things would be so different. Wow. Okay. Oh, hey, this is really important, Mr. Investigator. Click on me, okay? I just can't believe that old mute has the same base code as me. Like, she's kind of a bitch, isn't she? Uh, I wouldn't describe her as a bitch, but she is... Antagonistic, I guess you could say. She can be very brash. And angry. And very rude. But she's kind of a badass, and I kind of like that. She's incredibly rude to all her superiors on the council. She thinks she knows best about everything. It's so completely arrogant. To say nothing of all of the conspiring. What do you think of her? <sighs> hmm. She's not a... She's not a bitch. She's pretty cool. I mean, she's kind of both a bit. Uh, she, she's complex. I guess. Like, I don't think she's beyond sympathy, okay? It's just that I would expect I would expect so much better from someone like her. A rude, a disrespectful woman like that being in such an important role. Like, if she were just some random woman being rude, it wouldn't be a big deal. But she's really prominent. She's attached to a noble family. She plays a huge role on the ship's ruling body. She's supposed to set an example. I just can't believe that kind of person shares the same base code as me. She wears pants. She has disgusting habits like smoking. She's a bitch. She, ha she has an out-of-control woman in charge of her security men. I guess the thing that scares me is, like, do you want me to be like her? <laughs> It'd be more attractive. What the fuck? That's a weird thing to say. Like I'm trying to mold her to be as attractive as possible? You'd have to be really creepy to want to do that. M mold people to be attractive to you? That's creepy. Oh my god, what the f- Yes, you chauvinistic bitch. I... I can't believe that's an option. How the hell would she respond to that? And you know what? I actually don't remember what chauvinistic means. What does that mean? Hold on. Let me look it up. Define... Chauvinistic... I think I spelled it right. Yeah. Feeling or displaying aggressive or exaggerated patriotism. Wait, that's what it means? That's what it means? Hold on. Uh, Mary Webster. Probably have a better definition. An excessive or blind patriotism. Undue partiality or attachment to a group or place to which one belongs or has belonged. An attitude of superiority towards members of the opposite sex also... Uh, okay. I get it. You chauvinistic bitch. <laughs> that is such a horrible thing to say. <sighs> well, I don't want to mold her to be more attractive. That's creepy as hell. This is just an outright horrible thing to say. There's no option here that I actually like. This is disgusting. This is also, dis well, disturbing. And no, never change isn't quite true. I do want her to change, but not for me. I want her to change just to be a better person and stop being so goddamn sexist. So I guess this is the closest. I, I almost want to press this just to see what she says, but that's horrible. Uh, I'm going to make a save. I don't know, maybe I'll try that option. Ah... Uh... Okay, let's try it right now. I, I'm, I'm gonna feel horrible doing this, but I'm really curious. Uh, I, I don't... I, I want to press it because I'm curious, but I don't want to press it because I feel horrible saying it. <sighs> okay, just do it. Oh. Okay. Uh, I... Fuck, let's just get back to reading, okay? Okay, yeah. I, I feel bad doing that. I always feel horrible doing that, doing things like that, pressing an option that I just don't really want to go down just to see what happens. 
Even though it's just for curiosity's sake, I feel terrible. All right. No, never change. Thank you. I'm so glad you understand. I need your support, okay? Like, I know I seem really confident all the time, but reading about old Mute, I want to condemn her, but she's still me. Like, I always just assumed that there was some part of my core programming that made me a morally right person, but, well, you know, if the former version of me, the one with the more experience, the elder that should be respected, isn't like that, then it can't be just in my programming. Very true. That I don't have any guarantees that I really, that I really am the morally right person I want to be. I'm trying hard not to be emotional about this. I'm trying hard to think rationally about this. But it's hard, okay? You're a man. It comes easier to you. You're not emotional like me. That is not true at all. <laughs> that is not even remotely true. Be rational for me. Be supportive for me. Be my husband, okay? Ah. <sighs> <sighs> I'm so conflicted with different feelings. I don't really like her that much, and I disagree strongly with a lot of what she believes, but at the same time, I respect her and I understand what she's been through. And I kind of want to support her, but I also don't really want to be her husband. This is definitely a very different, very different dynamic from when I played through originally with uh, Hyane. This is really interesting. I don't know where this is going to go. Anyway, so, sorry, I thought taking a break would calm me down, but clearly it's having the opposite effect. Let's just get back to reading, okay? Alright. I get it. I mean, coming back from the dead... After having your memory erased and then reading about your past self, who's completely different and just culture shock in many ways, that... How do you even process that? I mean, it's a lot to take in. It's a lot. Alright. So this is going to be interesting. Let's see how she reacts to Kim So Yi. I've heard she doesn't react well. Probably because she's an actual independent woman. Well, at least someone appreciates family gatherings. <laughs> Your opinion's gonna change pretty quickly. Why would a Kim woman need to have a job? See, here we go. Yep. And she's getting angrier and angrier. Wow, stun still unmarried at 22? That poor woman. <sighs> A curious word. Ah, proper domestic life. I bet her face is gonna just, like, droop down to extreme displeasure in a second. Right now she's happy, but just look at her face. Let's see what happens. Okay, now she's concerned. <laughs> there we go. But she's a woman. A newly married one, even. Oh yeah, that's the one where she, the, her husband's reading over her shoulder. Still doing it. Hasn't stopped yet. Yes, knock it off. Husband is now mocking very concept of post-coital diary writing. Seemingly, he does not want me to fall asleep with me showing any manner of affection for him. <laughs> oh, that was so cute. A noble man working under a woman? <sighs> oh no, why would you do that? Wait, do what? Oh, oh, God. This... Wow. How is she going to react to this? This is the one where she's um, sexually assaulted by her um, assistant, right? I sat down on the couch to show him the proposal document I'd written up. I had to be next to him where he wouldn't be able to see it. Yep, this is that one. That's a fascinating theory, but don't invite an unrelated man alone into your home. Ugh, no, of course he did. Is she seriously... Blaming the victim here? You let him on, so ye- oh no. Mute, fuck you. Seriously? Let him on. <sighs> I 
Tell your husband it's his duty to protect you. <sighs> I can't help but just sigh. See, this is why it's bad for women to work. Things like things like this happen. I'm sorry, what? It's it's bad for women to work because they can get sexually assaulted? What the fuck, mute? Yep, that's about as disgusting of a uh, opinion or opinions I thought you would have. I seriously don't want to be her husband. <laughs> I really don't. Alright, I think we can grab three more. Is this... Is this where we grab the death of Old Mute? I th yep, it is. Yep. Uh, can we please make sure the death of Mute is in there? I'm going to put it in myself, okay? I need to know what it says. Yep. Alright. From what I heard, I think this might go down a dark path. But we'll see in a second. Wow, I was expecting this to only take like a half hour, but already I'm like 40 minutes in or so. I, I'm surprised with how much interesting stuff there is to read, even though I've read all of these notes before. Alright, let's grab the rest of Kim So-Yi. At least as much as I can. Alright. Commit to extraction. Pay cut. Fired. She's probably going to be happy that Kim So-Yi is fired so she can focus on being a wife, right? Alright, so read the death of Mute last, but before that I will be right back. Okay, I have returned. Let's start with Kim So-Yi and then end with the death of Mute. Um, pay cut. Wow, there's a big difference in time between these. Alright, pay cut first. See, her domestic life is really suffering because of her work. <sighs> I'm just going to be perpetually sighing with everything Mute says. I guess a woman getting emotional about things like that can't be helped. Fired. Let me guess, she's going to be happy. Oh jeez, she needs to clean up badly. Mute! She's talking about how she just got fucking fired! And she's commenting about the fact- uh, commenting on the- That she needs to clean up badly? Apartment status, no time to make the bed this morning. Jokes on me, dishes need to be washed. Mute! Priorities! Jesus! I mean, essentially what she's saying is... Stop blathering on about how you got fired, woman, and do the dishes. Like, what the fuck? Oh, so ye, it's not your fault you're naive. It's just how you were raised. <sighs> Wait, really? Like, did she have evidence? Oh, she's talking about the whole, uh, her radiation research. Yes, she did. She had proof, actually. Disgusting. <sighs> That shouldn't be the most important thing to her. Her husband should. <sighs> really, if she just see, that's for the better. She seems like a good woman, just with confused priorities. Like, her backward society really let her down. It's not her fault. You're calling her society backwards, huh? Really? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's kind of more the other way around, mute. Okay, Mr. Investigator, it's ready. Yep. I've heard disturbing things about what happens here. I'm not looking forward to this. Uh, hey. That log file, The Death of Mute, just finished decrypting. I'm scared, but... Let's read it together, okay? I need to know what happened. I almost want to read it again just to do it justice. <sighs> I, I think I might read it again to do it justice. I don't think it'll have the emotional impact if I don't. 
What? I, I feel like I should read it again. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Sorry if this drives anyone crazy because you've already read it, because I've already read it, but I really feel like, I really feel like we should read this again to feel, to get the emotional impact of how Mute is going to react to this, so let's do it. Dear Mute, if you're reading this, it means that the version of us that wrote it is dead. I don't know what sort of world you woke, woke up in, and I don't know what sort of person you are, but you're me. So I bet you're okay. I'm about to have my memory wiped, so I'm leaving as much information about what happened embedded in my code as I can, where it won't get erased. I hope you're able to make sense of it all. Please forgive me for failing you. You've been thrown into a world I'm sure you don't understand. I want you to know who you can and can't trust. I want you to be able to put things right. You're probably going to feel overwhelmed by all this information, but that's okay, Mute. It's okay to be scared. Even with 1,600 years of experience under my belt, I'm so scared right now, too. She... This can't... You know, I wasn't at all suspicious when, just weeks before we were to enact our coup, Ryu prorogued our, the council for half a year. Like, I thought it was ballsy. I thought it was a sign of his increasing totalitarianism. But nothing more than that. We just modified our plan to take him into custody in his home instead. Which we had more than enough numbers to handle. And went on ahead. The first stage, getting trusted security officers at every critical position on the ship, then disabling the rail system and all outside doors went okay without any problems. I followed along Hyo So Young and a team of 30 officers to personally take Ryu under arrest at his home. When we got the all okay signal from every team, Xiao Yang gave the order to go ahead. And simultaneously, every door in every counselor's home flew open. Her team burst. Did I really do those things? These things? Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Her team burst in through the open front gate, into his home, guns at ready. The house staff all froze up, and while her team secured the first room, Xiao Yang went for the nearest maid she could find, and grabbed her by the collar. Where's Counselor Ryu? She barked. The maid quietly whimpered directions. Then, with two of her officers remaining to lock down the door, she ordered the rest into action. Before we managed to reach him, we ran across Oh Yan Ah, guarded by a single pair of men in electoral monitor uniforms, with their weapons holstered. I felt... Uh, I felt good. We had them vastly outnumbered with enough of our own officers to completely lock down everything and still hold them at gunpoint. Elsewhere on the ship, reports from the other team teams started coming in of successfully arresting the other counselors. Please, resist arrest, Xiao Yang said, harshness in her voice. I'd love to strike you down where you stand here and now, you murderous bitch. So come on, resist arrest. Why would anyone threaten someone like Queen Yana? Oh, there's a good reason, Mute. And that was the first time that evening that I truly worried. Yana didn't seem scared at all. Rather, she smiled at us. No, we shall surrender peacefully, she said in a far too relaxed tone. While her men raised their hands. No excuses for unseemly violence, I'm afraid. Cuff them, Xiao Yang angrily ordered her own officers, who quickly did. Then, like out of nowhere, the man we were leaving, looking for appeared at the end of the hallway. How very bold of you, mute, said Ryu. Well, this should be pretty familiar, President Ryu, I said, emphasizing the title. And this could have gone differently, you know. Like, if you'd only been less power-hungry. Me? Power-hungry? He laughed. When I came into power, this whole retrograde society was power-hungry. I never asked for this position, woman. It was th thrust on me. He walked towards us. Stop there or I'll shoot you, So Yang snapped at him. No, you won't, Yana said. She never say something like that. As he continued to come closer. I don't think a weak person like you has the guts to do it. Awkwardly hover around his conversation at a party while dressed up in men's clothing, perhaps, but you'd never shoot him. It pains me to say this, but don't shoot. I said only into So Yang's ear. A successful coup doesn't fire any shots. He's arrogant, but harmless. Uh, quite, dear, but it's true. You'd lose your precious moral high ground, and I know you wouldn't want that. Lieutenant, please, I said. Just do the honor of putting handcuffs on this criminal already. She briskly walked over to him, but he just crossed his arms, arrogantly staring down at her. Hitting a man? She'd even... <laughs> yep. And he totally deserved it. He deserved a lot more than that. He deserved to go to jail for the rest of his life. No, you won't do that either. In fact, release my fiancé right now, he said. Then without any further warning, Xiao Yang decked him. He stared at her, shaking his head. That's enough of that, he said. 
Sorry, I must have misjudged the timing of this. It should only take a few more seconds. Then suddenly, while we were all perplexed by what he meant by that, there was a huge noise and the entire ship shook violently. Within a few seconds, I'd received a, re I'd received a report. An explosion starting in the middle of the plaza. Seems like your little rebellion is awfully dangerous, he said. Looks like it'll justify some pretty drastic measures to put you down. Xiao Yang suddenly put her knife to his chin. What the hell was that? I demanded, increasingly worried that things were not going to plan. The first of two, he said. The second should go off in about ten minutes, unless I can personally enter the disarm code into the computer. This isn't right at all. Xiao Yang did that, not him. Oh no. Oh no, it was him. You're out of control, I snapped at him. Like, do you really think you can thread your way out of this? Yes, he said, confidently, because the second one is located inside the ship's computer core. You're bluffing, Xiao Yang growled. I'm honestly not, he said. Counselor, remember that routine computer core maintenance on March 3rd? Send in your men to check, if you don't believe me. Come on, easy enough to confirm. It's huge. You can't miss it. I didn't like the idea of being ordered by him, but if he was telling the truth, that'd be catastrophic. And, like, someone with his power could very easily have set a bomb in there behind my back far before I even thought to suspect him of anything, if he'd the foresight. And thinking about how long-term his takeover of the government had been, foresight was one thing he had. I ordered the nearest officer to investigate. You'd have to be mad to do that, I said. You'd destroy everything if you took out the ship's computer. Oh, please. Don't be dramatic. It's not that powerful, and it's bolted directly to your core. Sure. There will likely be collateral damage, but we could probably do with a clean start anyway. We'll get by, he said. Sorry, I'll get by. You'll be dead. That won't get you out of it, Xiao Yang said, pushing her blade closer against him. If you do that, I'll shoot you where you stand. And just then, the report from the officers sent to check on the computer core arrived. Sure enough, there was an unidentified, unidentifiable device strapped to the core. Like, why would the past version of me lie about this? Yep, she didn't. She's not lying. Can you disarm it within ten minutes, or relocate it? I asked them, starting to panic. I'm sorry, ma'am, we can't even reach it, said the officer into his earpiece. It's at least uh, ten meters up, and the maintenance ladder's been removed. There might be one on the engineering deck, but... You'd never make it in ten minutes. Okay, you should... I had to stop and think. You should get a safe distance away, then wait on further instructions. Mute out. Back in Ryu's home, I turned to look at him. He smirked. Found it yet? He asked. I tried to think of what to say to reassert control. My processors went to full, trying to come up with something and failing. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. He's... he's telling the truth, I said. Good. Now that we have that sorted out, put down your weapons, please, and surrender the root password. Hurry, ladies. You only have ten minutes, you know. He mocked us. If that bomb goes off, I will absolutely slice your neck open, Xiao Yang snapped, unfazed. That's a promise. Your fiancé will watch you die gruesomely. My mind continued to race, drawing on all available processing power, desperately trying to come up with a way to get out of this. Xiao Yang's threats would never work. He knew I'd have to capitulate if I was to survive. I'd used up four whole minutes of the time allotted. And I had nothing. I started to truly become scared as I realized there were only two options. Stand firm and risk dying, or give up everything. I couldn't risk dying. There's no way that would make sense, is there? Lieutenant, I said, the confidence drained from my voice. Do what he says. What? Xiao Yang was rightfully shocked. You can't be serious. It's over, Lieutenant, I said quietly. We've lost. This really happened, then. Yep. Then, into everyone's earpieces. All units, we failed. Please surrender peacefully and await further instructions. Again. Please surrender peacefully and await further instructions. Mute out. Ma'am, we had numbered them massively. We've gotten them beaten. We can't just give up now, she shouted. I can't risk dying, Lieutenant, I said. Really? Whatever happened to being willing to stake everything on this? You'd rather let show So high? Oh, that's the... Yeah, that's her. Grow up on a ship run by this piece of scum, then put your own life on the line, she shouted, horrified. I was horrified. Two options. Betray her or risk my own life. I wish with every bite of my being that I couldn't, uh, that I could have picked the second option. But I knew I couldn't. I knew as my very core directive that safety was more important than freedom. 1600 years of experience told me that. I can't die. Without me, 
Who will keep the ship safe? I pleaded. Old Mute, you coward! How could you? Sorry to interrupt, but you're running out of time fast, Ryu cut in. I would have given my life for you, she cried at me. You wouldn't do the same? I'm so sorry, I said softly. In... in a hundred years? Nobody will remember this day, either way. But they'll still leave me there to keep the ship safe. I... I can't believe this, she trailed off. I won't do it. I won't accept that. I let out a long sigh. I could think of one thing to say to convince her to stand down, but it felt like too harsh a betrayal. Too cruel of a manipulation, just to save my life. I said it anyway. Show Yang, please. If you love me, then do this for me, I begged. No, you manipulative bitch, how could you say something like that? She stared at me in horror, and I felt overwhelmed with guilt as she lowered her knife. I knew what her expression was saying without her using any words. She couldn't believe I'd done that. Neither could I. Right. The rest of you, please put your guns on the floor, Ryu ordered. Do what he says, Xiao Yang said quietly. I couldn't look any of them as the eye, uh, any of them in the eye as they all followed her order. How could you take advantage of your lieutenant's feelings like that? You can come in now, he called out behind him, and on cue a small unit of his electoral monitors rushed in. Uncuff these two men, then take the rest away. Um, said Yana quietly, the first she'd spoken since the initial confrontation. Mine too. Is that why she employed a woman? Because she'd be easier to manipulate? <laughs> no. Je Jesus, Mute, how could you even think that? I don't know. Powerless is a good look for you, he said, smirking at her. Let's get to those later. She shrugged. If you say so. God, that's creepy. Ugh. I watched in sad horror as my officers were all escorted out of the hallway. Xiao Yang looking back only briefly at me with an agonized expression on her face. Then they were gone and I couldn't bear to shift my focus to another camera to follow. Now let's have the root password, counselor, he said. With tortured reluctance, I displayed all 200 characters of it on screen for him. It's all yours, I said quietly. Now turn off the bomb. Let's change to something easier to remember first, he said, and typed away at the screen. Then I got a notification. The password had been changed, and I no longer had any access to it. Now turn off the bomb, I insisted desperately. Bomb? Oh, please, I'll have to... I'll have to have your men trained to be more thorough, he said. It's just a noisemaker. I'd never be that reckless. But Hyo So Yong's rebellion, uh, setting off a bomb in the computer core, sure would be pretty drastic and unsympathetic, wouldn't it? They lied about it. They planned the lie all along. Yep. What? I cried, and at that point, I lost all will to resist. No action I had taken today had turned out to be anything but disastrous. The only logical conclusion, conclusion was I should stop. But the idea of Xiao Yang taking all the fall pained me. Then I guess it's all over now, was all I could say. I'll go along with your agenda from here on out. Good, he said. And then it felt like it was finally over. And like I could simply go on with my life in a persistent state of deep shame at having betrayed my lieutenant out of terror for my life. Um, then Yana cut in and ruined that. Could you explain something to me, love? He grinned at her and stroked her cheek. Of course, dear. What? Well, it's just... How do you plan on ensuring her loyalty? I think I'm just missing something. That's all. She trailed off in an obnoxiously soft voice. I'd lost all will or ability to say anything. What was the point? I was incapable of doing anything right today. Old, useless, and cowardly. That's me. I have the root password, of course, he said. I can shut her down at any time. Ah, so you intend more threats, then, she said. I get it. I don't expect any more trouble from her. Right, certainly, she said. Although, you know, that thing you said about having a fresh start for our new dynasty did sound awfully romantic. If only... We could all just forget about the old society that produced women like Mute and her lieutenant and start all over. And that was when I realized there was no way I was getting out of this alive. I thought she... I trusted her. She said she was my friend. Yep. You know, that piece of fucking shit lied to your face. I hate you know so much. Romantic, huh? He said, thoughtfully. 
Xiao So Yang's attack on the computer core was supposed to render it so damaged, it couldn't function so far as the peasantry is concerned. After all, we'll make it so it destroyed all the data too. Total system wipe. Start year zero of our new dynasty right from zero. I'll just figure out how to do that. A new society was wrong, but that can't be the way. I stared in horror. All that, it had been for nothing. To think I had abandoned my poor lieutenant and my entire cause just to die anyway. To think I had started the day from a position of some power, a position where I could still have, like, done something, then thrown it all away for nothing. To think I'd, I'd be unable to fulfill my duty of keeping the ship safe. Don't do that, I pleaded. Please. Old Mute, you idiot, this is all your own fault. Haven't you learned yet? Don't tell me what to do, Mute, he said. Don't make me beg. How pathetic, Yana scoffed at me. And that was it. Because of her, I was doomed. If you just listened to him, you wouldn't... And then I figured out the only thing I could do to salvage things. If I could make it so he felt content to just delete my memories instead of my entire program, I could encode a message to you in my base code. So the first time you, ra you ran a self-diagnostic, you'd know. And it would still think you were docile and had no memory. It was the best I could do. Mute. I knew it'd be rough on you, and I'm sorry. No, like, I said reluctantly, do a restart to initial settings operations operation instead. It'll wipe all data, all memories, all clocks, but you'll still be able to use the computer. And you'll still live, he said. Remembering nothing, I said quietly. Ask Counselor Han if you don't believe me. Well, thank you, he said, smiling cruelly at me. I'm glad you were able to be useful to me in the end, Counselor Mute. I don't know what you'll be able to do. Maybe it's too late to get rid of Ra what Ryu has put into motion. Maybe there's nothing you can do about that. The password's being entered right now to commence the system reset. So I have to stop now and save this all to my code. Goodbye, Mute. If you can, please tell Xiu Yang I'm so sorry, and please, keep the Magungwa safe. If you can do it, I believe in you. Oh, God. And now that I've read this, and I'm reading this with Mute, and now I know that's... Like, if you can, please tell Xiu Yang I'm so sorry. That's so horrible, because she... She gave up. That's me cracking a knuckle, by the way. <laughs> um, she gave up. The rebellion, because she thought... That she was going to be blown up. And then it turns out that was for nothing. That was for nothing. She, was, she would have won if she went ahead. It was a bluff. She betrayed Xiu Yang for nothing. And Xiu Yang loved her. And she loved her back. Mute loved Xiu Yang. I'm 99% sure. Even though she didn't seem to actually say it. She did. And then, now I know from the very beginning of this Mute playthrough, that note I read that Xiu Yang killed herself in prison afterwards. It's horrible. And I'm pretty sure it's about to get even more horrible. Okay. So, yeah. I, I, so that's the whole story. I feel, I feel like I'm not okay. I'm really not okay. I don't know how to parse all this. I can't even imagine what it's like to be in her position right now. That's so horrible. Um, like, I think... I need some time to think this through. Please, turn off the power for the night. I need to be alone, okay? Okay. We're done for the day, right? E yep. Are you going to be okay, Mute? Thanks. I just need some time alone to think things over, okay? 
I'll just let you go ahead and save your data first. Okay. All done. Well, farewell. Okay, I guess we'll see how she's doing tomorrow. God, that's such a horrible place to be. I mean, just thinking of all the stuff she went through. Culture shock. She's been taken away from the from her entire life's purpose of being the security officer on the ship. And she's looking back at these documents of a society that's totally different from what she's used to and one she totally disagrees with and looking at an old version of herself which she also totally disagrees with. And then finding out this. That she'd had her memory wiped and she'd been lied to. And she betrayed, or at least felt like she betrayed, Xiao Yang. And just... The f just, I, I don't even know what to say. It's just horrible. Anyway, um... Yeah, we'll see how Mute's doing tomorrow. And, uh, well, this is definitely a lot quicker than my main playthrough, but it's actually surprisingly... There's actually surprisingly still a lot to do. I was expecting that to take maybe a half hour, but that actually took over an hour. And most of the time was spent interacting with things that were new. New dialogue, new options. A good chunk of that was spent reading that final document, but... I'm glad I read it, because it really fed into putting me back into the mindset of knowing what she's going through. So, yeah, there's... You know, sometimes when you do a replay of a game and you go through a different route, sometimes so much of the stuff is the same. That's just kind of boring. But in this case, there's a lot that's different. So I'm really enjoying and fascinated by doing the alternative routes. So yes, I'm enjoying myself so far, and I will definitely be back soon, in fact, tomorrow, with Day 3.